or you can check in about your uh, you can check in about your personal journey, what's going on if you're having a hard time, a good time about your meditation. And so I was talking with the practice leader and um, just kind of talking about life. I was trying to piece together that chapter proceeding and I said, you know, like, what is, what is it? You know, a big part of Buddhism is about, oh, just be in the moment and, and um, you know, like let what comes come and, and um, words that, that feel like this <laughs> to me. And so... Uh, so I was asking about that and she said, Oh, you know, like life, it, it's kind of like, um, being in a little, like a little ping pong ball floating down the river. So like the ping pong ball floats and it doesn't really have control over where it goes. It just kind of bops along and it bumps into things and, and it just kind of goes along and, and that's, that's it. And I remember like as nice as that imagery sounded and the way she described it, um, she was very earnest and, but when she said that, there was something that was just like, uh, like inside, I just felt this like cringe, like, no, like, I just, I don't agree with that. Like, there's just something that that just doesn't sit right with me. Um, and, uh, you know, so over time, I, I just kind of realized that, no, I think that we do have, we do have plenty of say in what we do in our lives. And um, yes, we will bump into our hurdles and flows. And, and there are all of these things outside of our control, but we do have full agency in how we engage with it. And so, yeah, so I ultimately came to that conclusion. And that was a one key thing with why I decided to leave the monastery. There was a time when I thought I might just be a monk and like, and shave my head and, and do the whole thing. But, but that just felt like, mm, I don't think that's right. And I think I have other stuff to do as, as wonderful as this place is, as much as I appreciate it. Um, and as much as I would recommend it to somebody that, that wanted to take time for themselves in that sort of way. So that brings me to today with this whole, okay, so how do you drive the boat and engage? And I think that there's something really wonderful in not waiting at all. Um, so I'm recording this in, uh, the end of 2020. And so, you know, big, big, crazy year, um, with a lot of stuff. (laughs) <laughs> a lot of different areas, um, mainly worldwide, we had this quarantine and we had the COVID-19. And um, it's, you know, a lot of roadblocks and a lot of doors were shut very suddenly for that in kind of all areas of life. And while um, it is very hard and there is a lot that's, that we can't control, you know, for for those of, in performance, um, you know, you can't just make a theater be open and have people come and get sick. Like there are certain um, parameters for, for well-being and for being a part of society. But that doesn't mean that you have to kind of take an L, take a loss and just sit around and, and not, and not do what's exciting for you or to still work in some, some capacity. Um, I feel very, very fortunate to be in New York. I'm based in Los Angeles and I just got through directing a short film working with, um, many people that I went to school with at CalArts. So there is this wonderful sense of um, like that alma mater jive and, um, you know, all having come from the same training, it's um, this sort of, sh- this sort of a uh, shorthand with not having to fully explain, like we just have, even if we have our own aesthetic, we have the same foundation. So we can very easily communicate with each other in a way that um, is more difficult with, with somebody that doesn't have um, this training. Um, we went to a school that's very weird art school. So, so it's that, um, but you know, there's really no reason for me to be here now. Um, and you know, yes, I did all of the proper quarantine things. Those of you, um, that are like, Richard, what are you doing in New York? Did all the proper quarantines, did all the proper COVID tests. Um, this shoot was socially distanced and, and like all of the things like by the book, um, but I'm very, very excited that we didn't we didn't wait around. We we still kind of were proactive. Um, the producers and the writer and actors of this piece, and I, we kind of met a couple of times and said, okay, like how can we how can we do this? And we we kind of called our shot. We wanted to shoot it in the summer. It seems too soon then. But I thought, no, let's all put our energy forward. And um, and they agreed and suggested the same thing. Let's just see how we can do this. Aim for the fall. 
And, um, you know, if there's some crazy thing that's, that we can't control, then, you know, we'll, we'll pull off the gas and, and let it be, but let's decide that we want to make this movie. We're going to make this movie and we don't really know how it's going to happen. And we don't really know when exactly it's going to happen. And those two key things are absolutely not in our control, how and when. Um, there's, there's a lot of outside variables that come in with that. And so by not worrying about those and just kind of going on according to the plan A, um, it felt very, very good and exciting. I had a wonderful summer um, making a, a shot list and storyboarding this project, thinking about how we can do it, um, adjusting the script a little bit to be in the fall when it was set in the summer originally. Um, and it just, it felt so great to be creative, even though in that time I couldn't do much besides be, be in my apartment, um, you know, either working or, 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 you know, watching TV or reading, or I, I was stuck inside. Um, but it felt so good to be, to be kind of working towards this thing, even though it felt impossible much of the time. There's no way that I can go to New York. There's no way that anything's happening anywhere in the world. So how do we, how do we deal with this? And, you know, just by kind of having our eyes on the prize, focusing on what it feels like being done, you know, the next step of the, of the production just kind of would come automatically. And so even though there were days where I couldn't be in New York, I could do something working towards it. I could do the storyboard. We could try to, we could find a crew. We could, um, you know, just set, settle on the location. So there are all of these things that we can do just as though we could shoot tomorrow. Um, time, some time would have needed to happen anyway. So we just did everything we could. And there were a few obstacles, nothing really major, honestly, with this one. I feel very fortunate. Um, but when it became available for us to, to, to do this, we were ready. You know, if we had waited and said, oh, well, it's shut down, you know, la, la, la. And we didn't do anything until now deciding, oh, now we can we can do it. And then starting all of that pre-production process, um, we would have missed this opportunity. And as you can see, I'm, I'm in a T-shirt. Um, I mean, if not for the building behind me, um, you would think I was maybe in a place where I was in California. So we would have missed this beautiful weekend, this beautiful weather. Um, you know, it's a mild day, yet we still had the autumn leaves. All of these things just kind of came into place. Um, yes, um, just looking at some comments on the Instagram. Uh, so yeah, Al Gordon mindset makes things happen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, those of you check out, if you're interested, um, Al Gordon underscore 86 on Instagram, um, or on YouTube, the let's get it podcast. Um, you get your fitness game on, get your motivation, right? Um, a lot of the things of, we, we kind of go a lot of, a lot of what I'm talking about goes hand in hand with his approach. Um, so uh, if you're ready for like, okay, let's get on the battlefield and just make it happen. You'll want to tune into some of Al's work for sure. Um, this is a little bit of the, like looking at the playbook. <laughs> so, um, so yes, by being ready, by ready to go, um, it just felt great. We could jump on the opportunity and I didn't miss all of the summer. I was still working creatively within, within the bounds of the circumstance. Um, so yeah, so so don't wait. Um, and, you know, we don't have to be the little ping pong ball floating along the river. You can be totally welcome to be. There's a lot of excitement that can come from not knowing what's next and, and going with the flow. Um, that can also be very useful when we're in a place of wanting to be very control and meticu controlling and meticulous about, about what we're doing. Um, sometimes it's good to just let go for a minute and just see, okay, what if I just see where I can go and then get back to paddling? Um, but then on the other side, you know, yeah, paddle, like decide where you want to go. There will be currents, there will be challenges, sometimes worldwide challenges, but that doesn't mean that you have to abandon your goals, your dreams, your desires, your intentions. It's just simply a, a different hurdle. There's always going to be a hurdle. Um, or hurdles. Uh, let's see. I think that's it. I feel. 
I feel like this is getting more soap boxy than, than I intended. So, so maybe it's time to pull back, but, um, just wanted to check in very excited, very thankful, um, for this day, for this shoot that we just did. Um, I can't wait till I can share the, um, share the product with you all. Um, so yeah, so that's it. Um, don't wait. Uh, don't worry about how or when uh, things are going to happen. Those two things are not in your charge. Everything else um, you can totally you can totally just start to work towards plan. The next step is always there. If there's something that you can't do in your journey towards your goal, I think that's you know sometimes that's just wait. Let that cook. Let that percolate. What else? What else is there that will work towards this? Um, and then you're never in a detour. You never have to be in a detour. Um, yeah. So uh, I have a couple of hours. I'm going to, I think, read a little bit. Um, and then, uh, yeah, just kind of sit out here and enjoy this, enjoy this beautiful afternoon. I have a class that I'm teaching um, online. That's another thing. Like, it's fantastic. I don't have to miss work <laughs> by being here. You know, I get to travel across the country and don't have to take time off work. Um, you know, teaching online in some ways isn't the most fun, um, particularly I teach theater. Uh, however, you know, it makes it very easy to to go go shoot some work and then, and then still be there for my students. Uh, so I'll have that class this evening, which will be afternoon in Los Angeles. Um, yeah, what else? Um, shooting in New York is a lot of fun. There are far fewer helicopters than there are in Los Angeles. Los Angeles is like every other take, you're pausing for a helicopter. Um, our scene was in a park and it was actually very peaceful. So there was no, um, not much noise. You know, we had this one guy that was very like, Tony Soprano kind of guy on his cell phone, like walking in the background. So we kind of had to hold for him. <laughs> that was kind of funny. And uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, still getting paid. Uh, yeah, I don't have to call out sick for work. Um, I see. So we had the Tony Sopranos guy. Who else was interesting? Um, there was one shot where we were waiting for a train. And uh, so the shot was um, the character was sort of in a like kind of an introspective sort of dejected bummer place. And so there's this beautiful bridge behind him and, and it, where the train goes. And uh, I wanted to get this shot of like the train, like passing through looking like the train is going through his head. Um, and it was this really, really beautiful shot. We had a lovely angle on the bridge getting smaller. And so we were waiting for the train, like a, a few went by as we were getting other shots and then it came down to getting the train shot. So I thought, okay. And, uh, I tried to find the schedule of where, when the next train would come in, but you know, trains come from different directions. So it was sort of a Sudoku. Um, so I thought, okay, so we'll just wait. And we ended up waiting almost an hour <laughs> hanging out. And, um, as the director of the show, I felt so much like, uh, Captain Ahab <laughs> in Moby Dick. I was like, man, like the whole crew's just kind of waiting. We're all sitting there. The actor's set in his spot so that when the train comes, we can just capture the moment. Um, and I felt so bad because there was all this energy and like waiting happening for this for this moment that I really wanted to capture. And I thought, oh, there's just this, like I just felt the weight of like the day for all of these people. Like, oh man, what are... What are we going to do? So I checked in with them a few times and they were so, so gracious and, and wonderful. Um, and uh, yeah, so we ended up getting the shot. Then the next train came by um, in just under an hour. And I thought, okay, uh, that's that. I don't know. No other real anecdotes from the, from the shoot. It was just very, very smooth. Um, let's see few comments here yes Liz T and treats Rochelle a very insightful chat thanks for sharing I agree we have to co-create 
our existence and not just be a ping pong ball. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's um, it is. It's more fun that way. You know, it feels so much better taking taking agency and and playing and in getting getting wrapped up and yeah maybe i will fall on the ground but it's so much better than sitting it out and um rather than meeting being met with a challenge or an obstacle or a wall even and just going oh well we can't i don't to me it's much more engaging and much more i feel much more alive when it's like okay well what can what can i can do (laughs) i can't do this now what what am i able to do uh and let me just do that because, um, well, I mean, I don't like waiting anyway, so so why wait? Um, I can do I can do something else or find another way that will be surprising and, and even more fun. Uh, vodka? No, this is water. Why am I rambling like it's vodka? <laughs> uh, I'll ask if if this is vodka. No, it's water. Water, water, water. I don't drink vodka. That stuff's horrible for my head. Um, all right, folks. So yeah, last night in New York, I'll be back tomorrow in LA. Um, cool. Thanks all for tuning in. Uh, feel free to message me, uh, questions, comments. Um, this is also for, for the YouTube channel. Um, actors, if you're curious about acting, how you can, how you can take agency as actors in particular, it often feels like, oh, well, what can I do? I need a playwright. I need a director. I need another scene partner. I need designers. So there is this sense of, well, you know, I'm a part of part of this big group. How can I still take agency? Feel free to leave me a comment, and uh, and we'll talk about how how you can achieve that. The not waiting, even if you do require working with other people. Um, hint, hint. You have a cell phone with a lot of cool stuff. You can make a very awesome movie with just your phone. Uh, you can make a legit a legit movie with with just your phone. So um, there's that. All right, everybody, have a good Wednesday. I'll talk to you soon.